क्लासिफिकेशन अकॉर्डिंग टू बेनिफिट बेनिफिट फॉर ऑल ओके तो देर पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर विच इज प्रोवाइडिंग बेनिफिट टू सर्टन टाइप ऑफ ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल then public expenditure which is providing benefit to special benefit to special group of people we had explained that now i am explaining productive and unproductive public expenditure one minute children this is not writing properly productive and unproductive expenditure okay what is the example of productive expenditure take down expenditure on infrastructure expenditure on infrastructure agriculture development yeah i hope you can see here this is not writing properly agricultural development industrial development are the example of productive expenditure <clears throat> children productive expenditure means which will add the productive capacity of the nation productive capacity of the nation it will add it will add productive assets for example when the government is constructing roads when the government is constructing airport when the government is constructing a uh, sea port you know these are the example of infrastructure वो तो ऑटोमेटिकली इट विल इंक्रीज द प्रोडक्टिव कैपेसिटी एंड इट विल इंप्रूव द इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द नेशन मनी विच इज स्पेंड ऑन एग्रीकल्चर मनी विच इज स्पेंड ऑन इंडस्ट्री दिस इज क्वेट यू नो यूजफुल टू द इकोनॉमी देन व्हाट इज अनप्रोडक्टिव एक्सपेंडिचर व्हिच डू नॉट एड any value to the economy which do not add any value to the economy that is known as unproductive take down the points properly unproductive i am just rubbing <coughs> unproductive <coughs> expenditure kya karega it will add burden to the economy <clears throat> it it is adding burden to the society what are the example of unproductive expenditure unproductive expenditure we go best is defense interest payment defense interest payment okay expenditure and law and order these are the example this will not
this will not add any asset. This will not add any asset. I hope children you are understanding. Productive and unproductive. What is the fundamental difference? Productive assets will create some asset to the economy. It will be adding to the, uh, you know, production of the economy. The money which is spent on infrastructure, the money which is spent on the construction of roads, dams, electricity. Okay, the money which is spent on railway. These are all considered as productive. What about unproductive, which will not be adding anything to the uh, productive capacity of the country. It will be just a routine expenditure, unproductive. And an example like expenditure on defense. Okay, repayment of interest rate, salary, wages, all these are considered as unproductive. Now we are, I am rubbing now we are dividing it as per Dalton classification. Dalton's classification. Amitani, are you there? Today, after the lecture, na, give me a reminder called. Uh, to create the email for submitting the FC project. Don't forget. Uh, you. Mitali, I hope you are there. Thank you, Mitali. Give me a reminder call. I am forgetting to create the email so that you can start sending the FC project. And now we are looking at Dalton classification. First one is expenditure on quality and executive. <clears throat> In a democratic country, one of the most unproductive expenditure is this. There is the expenditure on Maintaining the political executives. What are the examples? Expenditure for maintaining or expenditure on the security of prime minister, president. Okay. Expenditure for the security, security of prime minister, president. This is one of the Biggest expenditure, you are aware that crores of rupees are spent per day. Z plus, okay, Z double plus, per day crore rupee expenditure of the Especially when president or prime minister is going somewhere and even in their, uh, you know, daily routine expenditure, huge money is spent. Similar level at the state level, state governor ka expenditure, state chief minister ka expenditure. These are all mounting to huge crores. You may ask, madam, why it is so? Because they are the heads of the country. They are the heads of the country. So, wo head ko protect karne ke liye paisa garcha karna hai padega. Lekin problem kya hai? Garcha to hum karega? No doubt at all. Okay. But whether it is useful or not, that is important. Another very important expenditure is administrative expenditure. Administrative expenditure. Administrative expenditure. You are very well aware. What is administrative expenditure? Money which is used by the government to pay the
Uh, okay. To pay the salary allowance to the government staff. You are aware that. Maharashtra mein lene par mandralaya hai. Mandralaya mein there are two big buildings. So many people are working. Their salary and their allowances. Like there are the 28 states. There is the governor and the, there is the parliament which has to be maintained. And it is a recurring expenditure. You are aware that every month we have to spend money. So administrative expenditure has to be very carefully controlled. If you are not controlling, then automatically public expenditure will shoot up. And remember, administrative expenditure is not production. Ka kaam nahi karta hai. This is coming under unproductive expenditure only. As far as India is concerned, 70% of the government ka expenditure is spent on salary for your information. 70% of government ka expenditure is in, spent on salary. You are aware that so many people are working in uh, you know, Mandralaya, in Bombay or in Maharashtra. There are so many employees, okay, railway employees, then state, state Bank of India's employees. Itna sara employees say India mein. Income tax, excise duty, all this department, lot of people are working. Railway, salary dena. It's a huge burden on the part of the government. They don't mind in giving the, uh, you know, salary. But the issue is it should not be unproductive. Then third one is expenditure on Security expenditure. Expenditure on security. The money is spent on army. Army. I don't know while writing this is. Army, Air Force, and Navy. These are the three wings of Indian Armed Forces. So you know that there are so many people who are working. Their salary has to be paid. They are all given accommodation. Okay, that has to be taken into account. In addition to this, again, we have to Get ready, Army, Navy, or Air Force, anytime if the attack takes place. So huge amount of expenditure, rather main chunk of expenditure in India goes towards this. Okay. Defense. Defense may all the three are coming, Army, Air Force, and Navy. And you know that this is very important for the security of the nation. Aapko to malum hai, security mein threat hona nahi chahiye. So government has to spend money and highest paid, seventh pay. All the people, army mein shipai se start kar ke, army general tak, navy mein bhi shipai se start kar kar, you know, navy ka top, admiral in charge, admiral general. It's a huge expenditure. But the issue is, Madam, can we avoid it? You cannot. Because any time attack can happen. Actually, our border is here. We have to see that. Uh, you know, like the border is well protected. Children. Then, next is administrative expenditure. What is administrative expenditure? The expenditure on maintaining judges, court, advocates,
So administration when con con included the children, there are different types of court in the country, starting from the lower court. Then there is a magistrate court. Mr. Court ke aage, there is a session court. Session court ke aage, there is a high court. Usse bhi aage hai, there is a supreme court. So citizen got the right. Because judge's salary has to be paid. Public prosecutors are appointed. Their salary has to be paid. I told you, please remember, democracy is a white elephant. What do you mean by white elephant? White elephant is not a but it is not costly. Similar story in Indian democracy. Mein. Itna sara department de. Aza to kami nahi karega, but the salary has to be paid. So it becomes expenditure. Uh, expenditure increases children. Please remember that. So then. Then social expenditure. What is social expenditure? Expenditure on education. Health service, expenditure on education, health services, social security. Okay, we know that education is highly subsidized in India. Municipal school education is given free of charge. Colleges also where you are studying, paid education. Education is subsidized because government gives money to the colleges to run the college. But it is an important thing. We cannot ignore education. Then this is one of the most challenging topic, health services. Normal time per. We are doing not so much money has to be spent on health. But other problems like COVID par, that has affected the entire budget of the government. So health is very important. Number of doctors should be there. And it requires good hospitals. So what is important is government has to spend money. Bombay itself, there are five to six government hospitals. Okay. Then I was explaining about social security. What is social security? Ke example, children, we can take down old age pension. The old age pension. Unemployment benefit, sickness benefit. There are so many expenditure. Democracy may paisa garcha karne ke liye end hai nahi. Please remember that. So all this is adding burden on the government. So we were explaining expenditure on political executives. That is prime minister, president, state, chief minister, governor of all the state. It's a very, very huge expenditure. But we cannot avoid it. What's the reason? Because it's a part of ceremonial head. Okay. So we have to spend money on all these people. 
then administrative expenditure i told you that is the general administration of the state or a country the salary and the wages then there is a security expenditure national security can never be compromised or be defined all this is the center then at least there is a solar system okay so it is also these are all very very easy one about the classification of public expenditure now comes important one Hicks classification. Hicks is the name of a public finance person. Hicks classification. Hicks is a very famous economist in public finance. According to Hicks, government has to spend money. He is dividing public expenditure into three. Defense, civil, developmental expenditure. According to his public expenditure is divided into three: defense, civil, developmental expenditure. After the money, my defense care he has so many times. Civil is the day-to-day -day administration. Developmental expenditure, etc. Here, why it is important? Because government has to decide what is more important to them. They cannot satisfy each and every population, especially a country like ours. So government should know how to prioritize. Accordingly, they will be dividing the public expenditure so that ultimately they can find out who got maximum benefit. So that you know gives them idea. These are the classification of public expenditure. Is there any doubt you can ask? Okay. Yes, children. Now, but I'm in India. No growth of public expenditure. I'm not going to say that you have to take them. What we are going to do is going to be a problem. Growth of public expenditure in India in the recent years. What's the growth of public expenditure in India? What are the causes? The theories. Or the causes. If an offline exam is, it's a guaranteed question. Okay. 
Okay. There are three important theories which are dealing with there are three important theories which are dealing with public expenditure. Broad and I am going to be listen carefully. I'm writing which are the three important theories. First one is Adolf Wegener. It is known Hitler. Adolf Wegener. He was a very famous German economist. Then Jack Weissman. Please take down. These are the name of the economist. And Alan Peacock. All are the foreign economists. They propose some theories in public expenditure. Wegener's law, Weissman Peacock hypothesis, because they work together. Weissman Peacock hypothesis. Please remember that. So there are three theories of public expenditure. First one is Adolf Wagner. He was a very famous German economist. And Jack Weissman and Alan Peacock. These two are from U.S. Did you take down Adolf Wagner? What are these three theories of public expenditure? Could you at least understand the name of these people? Adolf Wegener, German economist, then Weissman and Peacock. Weissman is the name of an economist. Peacock is also the name of the economist. Naya theory introduced So, what is the theory? That's what we are going to explain. First, we will start with Wegener. Wegener, Adolf Wegener. He belongs to Germany. His law is known as It's a world famous law. Wegener's law of increasing state activity. This is the law. Children, what is the name of the law? Wegener's law of increasing state activity. This law is proposed by Adolf Wegener. This law is known as Wegener's law of increasing state activity. The law is based on the public Adolf Wegener studied the increasing public expenditure in the, uh, you know, in Germany. And how did he study? The law of how the public expenditure in Germany. That is known as Wegener's law. Moment. 
earlier. That is, you have studied that in the beginning, the role of government was minimum. Please remember. In the beginning, role of role of government was minimum. Earlier state was known as police state, earlier. Madhulab state does not do many things. Most of the things was done by people themselves. Today, the situation has changed. Modern state are known as welfare state. And in the welfare state, the function of the government is very high. Function of the government is very high. What did I say? There are three theories in public expenditure. One theory is proposed by Adolf Wegener. That theory is known as law of increasing state activities. And that law was very popular in Germany. Okay, second theory is proposed by, <clears throat> I told you there are three people. First is Adolf Wegener. Second one is, second person ka naam kya hai children? Kya naam bola da? Weissman and Peacock. Weissman peacock hypothesis. So right today I just started with Wegener's law. After textbook name, page number 123. 123 to 124. We just started. The law is known as the law of increasing state activity. Earlier it was known as police state. Modern states are known as welfare state. Idonum ke beach mein, role of government differ. So why did the role differ and what did they achieve? That's what we are going to discuss in the next class. Okay.